Good afternoon. Thanks for coming. Uh, it's not often that uh, I have to get up and uh, talk to all of you because uh, as an ISP, we tend not to have lots of new products coming out, six monthly, annually, or however often uh, we can get things out in the Risk OS world. But we've been working on a project for the last two years to add some new features to what we do. One of the things that uh, I occasionally get asked for is uh, people go away on holiday and uh, they want their, a reply to their emails to go out automatically. You lost me, Sean. No? Sorry. Sorry. Um, Still there. And they'll uh, ask me to uh, set up a, a reply so that uh, when they're out at the office or away from home, people get a reply from their emails and they know they're not going to get a reply to the question maybe until they come back next week. Tied in with that is the ability to actually manually add aliases or change things to their emails. Now, we offer to do that at the moment, but the way that it's done is that it comes in as a request to myself and we get it sorted out at the technical end. And most large ISPs and um, people like GoDaddy or easily.co.uk where you put your domains, they actually give you a control panel. Now, we've looked at various control panels some of them are actually quite expensive to run, you have to pay a license fee every year. So what we've actually done is taken the decision to build a new server, put some new free software on there, so like the Linux model, it's available, it's open source, and that server has just gone live. Uh, still in testing, but uh, we're now starting to put uh, a few domains and things, so what I've got I thought you might like to see is I have a domain that's been set up and I'll just gently walk you through how to log in and show you the different features. We also have a new version of webmail because the webmail that um, if you use it and you'll be very familiar with it, it was set up uh, most probably back in about 2005-2006 when Paul started Orpheus. Very good but it's not being particularly developed. And again, people have asked us some of these things, oh, can I do this? And we can't do it for them. Somebody hasn't written the plugin or anything like that. So we may lose some features or something that you like in the way that it looks, but we've got a package that is being supported. And people are writing more modules and things for it. Uh, it is more commercial, so there are costs involved to us but uh, we're going to try and uh, be very reasonable with uh, what we do with regards to that. I'll come back to that at the end. Let's not scare you first. This is the domain that we've got here, kbrownassociates.com, a present I had for my father in Canada. So, uh, and that's the uh, login page as you see it at the moment. Again, we'll most probably tailor this a little bit so that it shows off this internet uh, either on there as well or in place of. So quite standard really, a username, uh, followed by a password. We click Secure Connect and then it should be logging. And you can see here that there are two uh, accounts set up on here, uh, DF73 and K Brown. K Brown has a crown on it and if you hover over it you can see in the bottom left hand corner it says this user is a site administrator. So the K Brown login that I've used is one that can create users and aliases as opposed to just a user's login which is restricted even further. So we have myself and our technician at the top of the tree 
then we have someone like uh, Kay Brown as the site administrator for this particular website available there. Here, the customer can change their password, and if I type in something like one, two, three, four, it's too short. So five, six, seven, eight. And it says that this is too simple a password. So uh, it would do its best to help them, guys. So if somebody wants to put in uh, their daughter's name or something like that, it's going to complain about it, even if you have the right length. It will say this is too easy to guess. If someone should get this URL and uh, gets to this sort of stage to, to want to log in. This is modifying the settings for the email. Obviously you can very simply disable it with just a tick box. So if you were uh, if you have two or three people in the family and for some reason or one of them disappears or leaves home or something happens, you've got uh, options to disable. You can add email aliases. Obviously there's just one pop box here, but if we wanted to add, there we are, we've added guest, so that would now be guest at kbrownassociates.com. and you can carry on adding lists into there and you don't have to talk to me about that. Somebody doesn't have to email me and ask me to set this up uh, in the way that we do it at the moment. It was something that Paul was thinking about but because he was incredibly security conscious it was something he wasn't too keen on doing. Uh, I've had a reasonable number of people and I think maybe a little bit more practically that uh, in this day and age we ought to offer this to allow our customers to do this sort of uh, feature. You can enable email forwarding as well and one that as I say I've been asked an awful lot about is the vacation message. So just enable it, start, stop and you can put your uh, comment into there I am away for this period of time and you could even say uh, uh, please email somebody else if you need to. Maybe not so much for uh, uh, somebody at home who's retired now, that may not be quite so useful for you, but uh, certainly for some of our business customers, uh, I know they're looking forward to that. And we can gradually move people across. It's not something that's just going to suddenly go live tomorrow and everybody will have this feature. Um, it requires a reasonable amount of work for ourselves to move people from one server to another. I mean, that goes on in the background. Uh, Everyone's domains have been moved at least twice since 2009. Hopefully none of you have ever noticed it because we try and do it quietly. But obviously hardware needs to be replaced. Um, and in this instance we've got a new a software for you there. And we're not going to do anything with that so I shall just say cancel. Along with this, this is the admin side. We have, I haven't added some of the other features that we are looking to do. These are packages that we will need to purchase. You've got various things down the side here. Uh, I've had access to this account for the last three days, so I don't know all the bits and pieces. Uh, Dan most probably would have been better. But uh, you can see we have a, a webmail client here that will enable you to do the normal pot service, IMAP as well from your email client, but sometimes you don't have a laptop like I brought around today, so you go away on holiday, you'll still be able to access it, and we'll go and have a look at the webmail uh, in just a minute. Sorry, my fault, I was going too fast. We've only got uh, two meg download, they need a better ISP here. <coughs> so you can see here, subdomains have not been enabled. Now that's something that uh, myself or Dan would do. But if there were, if we 
agree with the customer to allow you subdomains, this is where you would come and you could actually add them and administer them yourself. PHP is available and is available on all our websites or our domains that we host and that's available now, that's always been available, not everybody knows that. Um, one of the things that you can use that for is to protect subdirectories. Uh, a lot of people are putting photographs up but maybe some of them are personal or it's a special occasion. Um, we have one customer who looks after his village website that we host and they occasionally they had the uh, Olympic torch go through but it's got lots of people, it's got children and they're being very sensible, they only want to allow people who have a username and password so we've manually set up for them uh, got an HT access file. Um, from here you'll be able to, it's a bolt on that we want to add in, it's something that you'll be able to do yourself so that using a GUI like this you'll be able to go right to password protect these are the users, these are the passwords that they'll use and it's something that you can do and set up and hopefully it should only take five minutes which will be a lot smoother and quicker than what we do at the moment. There is some basic, basic web usage information um, and this shows you 57 visits and 156 pages. I don't think that's right because we don't actually have the website there. <laughs> so Dan may have just uh, done this so that uh, we've got something to show you. Um, there are other packages that are currently we run AW Stacks, which is a very good package. Again, that's something that we can add to this server, something else that uh, we have to purchase there. So um, we'll add it in at a later date. As you can see, these are, this is all usage information for email, disk size, FTP, how many times someone's coming on FTP. And uh, I think at that point, I've most probably shown you everything that I can talk about sensibly, so rather than waffle, I'll uh, log in and we'll show you the, uh, the webmail system. So we're using the same username uh, that we logged in with last time. And in actual fact, the same password as well. And here we have the new webmail. As you can see, that's quite different from our current system that we're running. Uh, one of the things is the new, the current one is lots of orange everywhere, which is company colours. This one's, I think, slightly easier on the eye, in blue and grey. So, for instance, if you've, that's just shown the standard inbox, but if we want to, we can add a new folder in, which will then enable you to uh, move your mail around and sort it out very much as you do with your email at home. We're look I'm looking at this at the moment as a, as a standard pop account where you would often download your email to Messenger Pro or Outlook or Outlook Express, Thunderbird, whichever email client you're using, in which case you're not going to see very many emails actually on this page at all because most of it's already been downloaded unless you leave a copy on the server but by default most email clients will just pick them up. If you run the IMAP service which again is available now you can do that with any of your normal accounts um, 
if you run IMAP on here as well, then being able to manage and add folders in or take folders out. If you do that, if you add a folder in, then you go to your uh, RISCOS or MACOS or Windows machine, then um, you will actually see that folder has been added there. If you move emails across, the next time you turn your machine on and it synchronizes, basically the same as going and fetching mail, you'll then see all those emails in those uh, particular folders. Now, of course, this could be quite useful if you wander around and you have a mobile smartphone. So I have IMAP on here, so it's very easy for me to check and see if I've received an email from someone on here. And when I get back to the office, it will be on the laptop. And when I go to the RISCOS machine, it will be on there as well. So they all synchronize quite easily. Now, if you're a business, then you tend to run Windows Server, so you run Exchange, and it does basically the same thing. So although we don't run Exchange ourselves, we do have IMAP. And again, that could be quite useful if you have more than one device where you want to see your emails in more than one place. That's useful. You might go out one day, there's no signal on here, but you're at a restaurant somewhere in Italy or Spain or Russia, and you trust them, then you can go to a computer and you can access your email via our normal webmail service or this new one that we've got here. And again, you can move things around, change them when you get back home, your device will automatically update and you'll see it there. So actually IMAP is something that we've been setting up more and more for people because of smart devices, tablets, iPads, um, some of the nice Android tablets that uh, Arcon have been selling next door. If you do use the address book uh, on this system, that is something that doesn't get synchronized, but this is sometimes, sometimes this might be used as a main email account if you're not particularly using your computer that much, or uh, you may just use it as an emergency, so you only need half a dozen in there. But it's a normal, standard thing. You can split them into groups if you want to, just add contact, add more groups, add contacts, remove contacts, and bin them as well. So, really fairly simple and quite easy to use. And we can even import contacts. I hadn't noticed that icon before. I set this one up, uh, I played with it a little bit yesterday, and uh, there's also a preview. So if we had any emails in there, we would actually uh, see a preview of the email down here. Resize it to see more than this. Yes, you can. I turned it on yesterday. Some people like it. I, I, I find it quite useful, but I know some people don't like it at all. So, so the killer question does it work on that? I haven't had a chance to test it yet, but that's something I should be doing next during this week. What do you do if it doesn't? Panic. Have a word with the guys at NetSurf and uh, let them have a look at it and see. Uh, this is one of the problems that we've got with RISCOS is that the web browsers aren't keeping up. I've got to offer this to, be, to all of our customers who, they do have RISCOS, uh, but they also have PCs, they also have Macs, they also have Linux machines. So to a certain extent, as much as I don't want to abandon RISCOS, and I certainly won't, we still have the old webmail system and we will continue to run that uh, as long as it's possible to run it. So we have a fallback position on there at the moment. Well, I haven't had a chance today. I was hoping to do it this morning, but uh, too many of you have come and seen me and chatted to me. So I apologize for that. Brilliant, so you've got the uh, perfect option to use it on the Mac there. Don't have to use Safari as I'm using here, uh, or Firefox. I mean, does, does say you want to test it there? I haven't got it on this machine. <laughs> That's, uh, you were asking about the uh, displaying of the preview. I'm very nervous. 